the uh, ones of interest are out of the queen's chamber because they have little doors at the end of these 200 foot long one eighth inch square tunnels that are not cut or not tunneled through the rock but they were cut in the stone during construction we're going to see here just a quick clip showing a 3d view of some of the stones how they are uh, placed and it's just mind-boggling and you're going to see what this little robot finds when it drives up the ramp to the end and uh, this is pretty uh, remote <laughs> to the Great Pyramid, and these are some of the large ashlars that have been, um, I guess, imagined to be there, but based upon the views of little Upwat uh, machine, you can see the ashlars there, and based on this, these cameras' views, they uh, try to reconstruct the blocks and estimate their size. Um, and again, this is uh, deep inside the Great Pyramid, probably one of the most remote humanly constructed places you could be on the face of the planet. And this is what he knew was there, uh, the people with the machine. They knew that was there and they, because they'd been a few years earlier. Now they've drilled a hole. This occurred last year, I believe, or a couple years ago. And just, we're going to see what's through that door with the camera going in right now. I want you to notice a little bit Something falls there, which is kind of weird. I'm going to look at that later. But you're presented with another door or a stone. Some people think there's a drawing on it. They're changing the lighting. It almost looks like a side view of a face penciled in. It could be a lot of stuff. Some other stuff falling there. You know, it must have been little rocks, but I, uh, we're going to look at this as if it was an anomaly shortly. But this is the thing that's in that little doorway room, and it's very small, and apparently we need to go further through this rock. Hey, John, we have a question coming in right now. Um, the question is, and I don't know if it applies to this subject, but it says, have investigators ever determined whether or not the legendary Book of Toth was hidden away under a paw of the Sphinx? Right, that Mr. Zawi Hawass is about to get his ass whooped in Egypt has been the, uh, I don't think I'll get in trouble saying this, he's been the uh, slowing down all the progress with figuring out what's going on. And he's known that there are spaces below those paws for decades. They've done seismic stuff. We've known about this, chain, this, this room back here since 1994 or six. Um, so clearly uh, it's not for the public digestion. We're lucky we got this footage here. Um, the, what was the original question? Uh, have investigators ever determined whether or <laughs> Oh, the or Books not of the Thoth. Book? Well, that's yeah. what this is all about. This is the Books of Thoth or the, I guess it's kind of synonymous with the Hall of Records. Well, the Hall of Records is where the Books of Thoth are kept. Thoth is Mercury, the, the Egyptian netter of wisdom and other things. It would be equivalent to Hermes, the Hermetic Doctrine. Uh, Hermes Tromesticus is the Renaissance version of that, which we can talk about another time. But uh, this is all what is talked about in the Egyptian material that they left behind as a uh, very important bunch of writings that uh, people have been hoping were stashed somewhere in the uh, pyramid or under the Sphinx somewhere. So we, yeah, we know that there's spaces there, but um, with Zawi Hawass, and now you got a war over there, we're not going to be getting any answers anytime soon, hmm. unfortunately. Thank you for the question, though. Yeah, interesting question. Now, let's, although Turkey is another country, Turkey happens to have the largest uh, megalithic site in the world, and it was just discovered not too long ago, and about 5% of it has been uncovered, and it's already the biggest. 
and there are many standing stones, circles of stones, you know, tens, fifty tons. Um, I've measured them with my tool. They look like very golden rectangles on, stacked on top of each other. And this is from 10,000 BC, all right? So right after the glaciers melted, these guys were able to build what you're going to see. Let it rip. This is called Gobekli Tepe, which means like top of the hill or something, but it's a southwestern Turkey. And there's no war there, so we can go out there and do some research, maybe. Located more than 500 miles away from the crowded streets of Istanbul, Ishanlurfa, in southeastern Turkey. There, in 1994, on a dusty hilltop, a local shepherd noticed the tip of a stone sticking out of his field. He began to dig, eventually unearthing a 19-foot pillar. Its edges were precise, and rising from its center was a relief carving of a strange animal. Upon closer examination, it appeared that the finely chiseled stone had been fashioned by talented stonemasons working with advanced tools. When word of the discovery reached the scientific community, one fact became obvious. A Kurdish shepherd had stumbled upon what is perhaps the most astonishing archaeological discovery in modern times, a site known as Gobekli Tepe. It has taken them 13 years to uncover only 5% of a gigantic civilization. They know what's under the ground. Circles upon circles upon circles, perfect circles in stone. And rising up out of those stone circles are huge sculpted columns, 19 feet high, 15 tons per column. Test results have supported the idea that Gobekli Tepe is nearly 12,000 years old, almost 7,000 years older than Mesopotamia's Fertile Crescent long heralded as the cradle of civilization. It is now double the history. And right there is this gigantic site with huge megalithic circular structures. It just stands there, a mystery, asking us to go figure, how was this done? What's the background to this? We don't know who made them. They just come out of the darkness of the last ice age where we know nothing and enter the stage of history already fully formed. And to my mind, this is indicative of a major forgotten episode in human history. So I love seeing that new stuff, the fresh stuff. Those uh, animals, a couple of those animals were sculpted out of the same piece of rock there. They removed the rock to reveal a little animal. I mean, Pretty unusual, and I, and I measured some of those things with my caliper on the video screen, and there's a lot of golden proportions in those items. Uh, Gobek, Gobekli Tempe. Tepe. Um, okay, we got some uh, UFO uh, chapter coming up. I've got a, a number of uh, short clips and a couple of uh, ones a few minutes long. All of these are compelling. I'd love your people's opinion on them, so feel free to call us and comment after you digest this. Let's start with the first one. This is unmanned Apollo 3. We saw this last week. But we have to hide that uh, number, please, when there's some stuff down below. Just want you people to see this is the, uh, there were some ice particles that flew, that were earlier seen there. There's some anomalous things that we're gonna see moving inside this uh, spent stage and we'll zoom in on them. We got very high quality 16 millimeter footage here. As the spent stage slowly rotates, you start to see some sparkly things. Again, we are in outer space. No breezes out in space, and there really shouldn't be too many particles floating around. And if they are, they go away, and they shouldn't come back. And as the vehicle twists and turns, the particles really shouldn't go along with it. 
and we're seeing that on the lower left. You're seeing some stuff that we will zoom in on in a second. Here is now the ejection of the camera automatically. Um, okay, here we go. There you see that white dot, of course, is the uh, command module section. And let's go look at this little guy cruising down there. He whips down there, he stops, and then he jumps up. Explain that to me. Some scientists call me up and, and tell me. Look at that thing just shot across from up there. I was zooming in. Look at this. Where's that coming from? What just extended it? What made it get longer and accelerate? Don't even bother answering the question because nobody knows. Here's another one down there. We're going to zoom in on this sparkly thing that's dancing around. <clears throat> Any day now. Stick with us, please. Oh, because the thing is still there. You'll still, in the lower left portion, you can still see the blinking material. I want to show you people all that zoomed in here. Extending, this is about extending your attention span for the bigger reward. There we go. Okay, can we zoom in on that, please? There we go. I just, just want, we're going to see this elsewhere. We're going to see this in other locations, and I want you just to keep this in your mind, the dancing particles that were seemingly connected just then. I'm going to show you this elsewhere. And look, it's just hiding there. Are those three separate things dancing around, or is it a connected single It strand? almost looks like a single strand. A, a cellophane or something. Yeah. Oh, I, I love it. Oh, there it is. Look at that thing just drifting off. All right, let's, let's go to the next one, please. This is uh, just high contrast. Let's just zooming in on that one particular thing. Now just look at that. That's, that's a kind of connected thing, all right? But there really probably wasn't a string connecting them. There wasn't anything solid connecting them. It's like a static. Electric on it was some kind of static. But I want you people to, to remember what you're seeing because you're gonna. I want you to apply it to the other clips and then let me know what you think. Because I think that's just amazing, amazingly inexplicable. You can tell me whatever scientific stuff you want. Okay, now we're going to the Apollo S4B. That's what you call that stage where they pull the lunar module out of it. I believe this is Apollo 7s where the little flaps did not fall off. And if you, you can hide us, please, because there's a little object that's going to be floating by right to left from within the cylinder. We're going to see it coming out someplace. There's actually a number of little objects. But we're going to focus on that little one cruising by. There it goes up to your left. We're going to zoom in on it because it's, it's similar to what we just saw in the other stage. It just comes out of the wall of the rocket and proceeds. Um, I think we're seeing faintly another one, perhaps. Let's zoom in now. And on your right, on the right side of, of the inside of this uh, stage, it should be slipping out. Where is that little rascal? There he comes. OK, I didn't quite focus the camera exactly where I wanted it. But you can see that little thing cruising out there. All right, that wasn't super exciting, but I just want to show you there's a preponderance of this kind of evidence. Look at this now. This is Apollo 9, walking in space or in Earth orbit. And we're going to zoom in to show you their little sparkly things. And NASA loves to say, well, this is the releasing urine or excess water. But we're talking about these particles are hanging out, and they seem to change direction on their own. Uh, let's keep moving on to the Apollo 6. This is Apollo, uh, the lunar module. I'm sorry, that last one was Apollo 16. This is the interior of the, of the limb. Let's just do this uh, once or twice. We had this last week, but look at that little floating cigarette butt. And look at that little mat who's zigzagging around. Here comes the cigarette butt. What do you suppose that is? Oh, it's coming at the camera. Okay. Does, do we have to get Buzz Aldrin on here to tell me he was blowing a fan on that and it was a cigarette butt? This is the Apollo 7 boomerang, one of the one of the greatest NASA UFOs. Hey, you show about everything. You're on. Hi, uh, my name is Primo, and uh, I'm calling. Uh, been watching, and uh, had a couple questions about 
the Apollo program. Hopefully, you guys will be able to uh, address. Sure, Primo, let it rip. All right. First of all, I've been watching you uh, specifically show Apollo Nine. 